Okay, welcome to the final episode of this series on cardiovascular disease. I hope you've found this series eye-opening and packed with valuable information. By now, you should understand the foundation of cardiovascular health is the vascular endothelial function, right? The health of these cells that line your blood vessels. But they aren't just passive barriers, remember? They actively regulate inflammation and blood pressure and clotting and immune function. So I hope you've learned that cardiovascular disease isn't just about avoiding heart attacks, right? Cardiovascular disease impacts everything from dementia and injury recovery and sexual function and energy levels and fatigue. Modern research shows consistently that the risks for developing cardiovascular disease go far beyond cholesterol. LDL and total cholesterol aren't even in the top 10 risk factors when you compare it to things like metabolic dysfunction and inflammation and infections and autoimmunity and other key drivers. The real drivers of cardiovascular disease include insulin resistance, type 2 diabetes, obesity, lack of exercise, and those other things that I just mentioned. But here's the problem. Many people who exercise, they eat right, they do everything right, they still develop cardiovascular disease. And why? Because some of the biggest risk factors, like hidden inflammation and infections and autoimmune conditions, they're rarely discussed in terms of cardiovascular disease. Autoimmune conditions and chronic infections like periodontal disease and H. pylori, systemic inflammation, chronic stress, are all silently increasing the risk of cardiovascular disease, even in those who seem to be doing everything right. Now, if we ignore these, we're missing a huge piece of the puzzle. So today, I wanna to look at how to assess for cardiovascular disease, and yes, we're gonna go way beyond cholesterol and LDL testing. Now, there's a few ways of looking at this. First of all, it's important to know about your history. If your doctor doesn't do a thorough history, that's a red flag. It's not just about family history though, or past strokes or past heart attacks. Your doctor should be asking about slow wound healing, cold hands and feet, erectile dysfunction, which is an early sign of vascular disease. Chronic infections like periodontal disease, past dental issues, H. pylori, autoimmune conditions, RA, lupus, psoriasis, environmental toxins, diet and exercise habits. If your doctor doesn't ask these questions, it may be time to find one who does. Okay, after a proper history, there is the classic physical exam. Your doctor and their healthcare team, like their nurse, needs to take your blood pressure properly. I made a video about this a while ago if you wanna look it up. Most healthcare offices don't take blood pressure properly, so it's up to you to watch out for the mistakes. Secondly, looking at the shape of your body is important. While BMI has traditionally been used for this, there's too many flaws in the BMI to talk about in this video, really. The weight adjusted waist index, on the other hand, has been shown to be a very good predictor. In this recent study on 26,000 Americans, followed for nine years, a high WWI, or waist adjusted weight index, increased the odds of cardiovascular mortality by 95%. And interestingly, in this study, those with a higher LDL had lower mortality, a trend that is seen in multiple studies, particularly in older adults and those without metabolic disease. So along with blood pressure and the WWI, a physical exam could also include temperature readings in the extremities, possibly an ankle brachial index, and maybe an oral exam to look for periodontal disease. Okay, so following a history and physical exam, blood markers should be looked at, right? Now, I'm not gonna go into great detail about this, but a simple look at cholesterol and LDL, it's just not gonna cut it. If you wanna assess lipids, right, things like oxidized LDL and lipid particle size and APOA and APOB and LP little a, they've been shown to be better markers than just cholesterol and LDL. But other markers like LPPLA2, which shows the amount of inflammation in the plaque wall, or tests like the HOMA IR or the TYG index, they're all great tests for assessing insulin resistance and type 2 diabetes. Again, if your doctor is simply looking at your fasting blood sugar and your hemoglobin A1C, I think they're missing the boat. Now, I've made a couple other videos on those topics if you want to look them up. But then additionally, looking at vitamin D, 
and something called the omega check, which looks at your omega-3 fatty acids and omega-6 fatty acids in your arachidonic acid. They are important tests which do have clinical validity for assessing cardiovascular disease risk. And lastly, and most importantly, we have to look at specialty tests. Top amongst them is the coronary artery calcium score. For asymptomatic adults, the coronary artery calcium score is the strongest predictor of cardiovascular disease events. Multiple studies have shown that it outperforms traditional risk factors in predicting long-term risk. For example, this study says the coronary artery calcium score has been shown to be the single best predictor of coronary heart disease and cardiovascular disease events. Coronary artery calcium score has emerged as the single best predictor of cardiovascular events in asymptomatic individuals independent of traditional risk factor calculators. In primary prevention, the coronary artery calcium score is now the best predictor of absolute risk of events over a 10-year period in intermediate risk adults. The absolute coronary artery calcium score is the best predictor of absolute 5 to 10 year atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease event risk. The presence of coronary calcium is the single best predictor of future cardiac events in men and women across ages and ethnicities. Coronary artery calcium strongly predicts with the same magnitude of effect in all races, age groups, and both sexes, which makes it among the most useful markers for predicting atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease risk. Yet many people on statins or people who are worried about heart disease have never had this $100 10-minute test. Have you? Now, some people think that the EKG is the way to go. I would certainly agree if you're looking for things like cardiac arrhythmias. But if you're looking for atherosclerosis, an EKG will only show an issue if there's more than 70% blockage in a coronary artery. Now, maybe it's just me, but I think I would want to know sooner. A close second to the coronary artery calcium score is the carotid intima media thickness test, or the CIMT. Now, this is an ultrasound of the carotid arteries in the neck, right? It measures the thickness of the arterial wall. It's a better predictor of stroke than the coronary artery calcium score, but not as good of a predictor for coronary artery disease. But again, it's a quick, easy, inexpensive test. Now, we've covered a lot in this four-part series in cardiovascular disease, and I hope it's given you a new perspective on what truly drives heart disease. We started by breaking down just how massive of an issue it is, not just as the leading cause of death, but also as a major factor in dementia, right? Poor healing, sexual dysfunction, fatigue. Then we explored the real foundation of heart health, your vascular endothelial cells, and how their dysfunction, not cholesterol alone, is the core of cardiovascular disease. Then we looked at risk factors far beyond LDL, right? Including insulin resistance, chronic inflammation, infections, autoimmune conditions, stress, even poor sleep. And finally, we dove into how to assess your risk. We did that today. Moving past the outdated cholesterol tests to focus on better biomarkers, inflammation markers, insulin resistance tests, and most importantly, the coronary artery calcium score test. Now, the real question is, what are you going to do with all this information? Right? Because knowledge alone isn't enough. Action is what prevents heart disease. So if you haven't had a coronary artery calcium score, ask your doctor about it. If you've only had basic cholesterol tests, look into ApoB, look into oxidized LDL, look into LPPLA2. And if you have signs of insulin resistance, get tested just beyond fasting blood sugar and hemoglobin A1C. If you've had autoimmune conditions, or if you think you have autoimmune conditions, or if you've had past significant infections or chronic inflammation, don't ignore their impact on your heart. And most importantly, start taking care of your endothelial cells with exercise, good sleep, stress management, and an anti-inflammatory diet that works for you. Now, you may have noticed that I haven't talked about treatment in this series, and that's intentional. Because the right treatment depends on the root cause, right? There's no one-size-fits-all for this. If your cardiovascular disease is driven by a gut microbiome dysfunction, 
that's where you need to focus. If it's low testosterone, that's what needs to be addressed. If it's diabetes or insulin resistance, then managing blood sugar is the key. The most effective approach to preventing and reversing cardiovascular disease is not treating the symptom, it's fixing the cause. So if you found this series helpful, let me know in the comments. And if you think this information could help someone else, share these videos with them. It takes a lot of time to put these videos together, so please subscribe and spread them around. Heart disease is preventable, but only if we start in the right places. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.